Easy work box. I'm about to hit you everywhere but under your feet with this one. This is a video for Daniel Jacobs versus Seleko. I just uh, watched the fight. A uh, good fight. Uh, Seleko came out and did way better than I thought he would. You know, even for him to be 26 and 0, you know, going against Daniel Jacobs, an elite fighter of his caliber. You know, uh, Seleko really came out there and showed that he's a good fighter. And I can see him upsetting a lot of uh, fighters at 160 soon. First, I want to come in and say uh, about the commentating of the fight. One of the commentators I do not like is uh, Max Kellerman. Max Kellerman, to me, knows nothing about boxing. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, you know, he used to be a rapper and everything, you know, but I don't know why they even hired him as a uh, announcer at fights. Uh, he said one of the dumbest comments <laughs> I've ever heard before in boxing, or I heard, well, he didn't say it a lot of them, but this just something that rubbed me the wrong way. When he was talking about Salico, he was saying that uh, Salico, this is the first round now. The first round just started like two, I mean, like a minute left in the first round. Uh, Salico, and Salico's giving um, Dan Jacobs a good fight. It's the first round, Max Kellerman. The fight ain't even really begun yet. The first round ain't over with. He just like he just sit there and talks for no reason and say things that don't have makes no sense to me. But I just had to say that I don't like Max Kellerman as an announcer. And now, in the fight, you know, Daniel Jacobs started off, you know, what I'm saying real, you know, slow, you know, what I'm saying. Uh, Daniel Jacobs jabbed and hit uh, Seleko in the face and winked his eye at Seleko, and uh, Seleko came right back with a uh, right hand quick right hand behind that and he, he did like this like you know like hey i'm here you know what i'm saying and i like that you know what i'm saying that showed that he wasn't afraid of Daniel jacobs and he was literally coming out there to fight but uh one thing i can say about in the fight is that seleko has a quick right hand he uh he was hitting dan jacobs numerous times with that right hand if he would have been a powerful fighter you know like a uh Golovkin or Billy Joe or Canelo or somebody of that level, he probably would have dropped Dan Jacobs because he hit him throughout the fight multiple times with that right hand. And that was also his downfall later on in the fight. But with Daniel Jacobs, Danny, to me, should, if Daniel Jacobs had great foot movement, he would be even more of a greater fighter, a better fighter. Now, I'm not down to Danny Jacobs or anything. Danny Jacobs is a great fighter. But I'm just saying, if it's like he he does the Adrian Broner. By that I mean he stands right there in front of his opponent. He moves around, you know what I'm saying? You know, even Broner moves around, but you don't see no hop, no move to him. You know, you know, getting your opponent to waste punches or you know what I'm saying, waste time in the ring. You know what I'm saying? Or get yourself together. He doesn't do that. He just stands right there in front of the opponent. Which is old school boxing, you know, I like that, you know what I'm saying, I'm not complaining about it. It beats somebody just running around the ring, jumping around a lot, you know, instead of him doing the floor. But I'm just saying, for Daniel Jacobs, for him to be the uh, fighter going up in age as he is, he should be working on his movement too, instead of standing there in front of, opponent, uh, in front of his opponents. Because that, that was one of the reasons that uh, Seleko kept catching him with the right hand. But uh, Seleko... You know, he, he, for, for, he's a good fighter. It's just that he was going against a more experienced and polished fighter. Uh, if Seleko would have fought anybody else, you know, other than Canelo or, you know what I'm saying, Golovkin or anybody else, he probably would have beat him. I literally think this was the wrong fight for his team to send him up against. I know that sounds crazy because he's 26 and old, not 16 and old, but I don't think they should have sent him up with, uh, against Daniel Jacobs. And, uh, you know, he just came back up, I think, from 154 to 160. So, you know, the weight could have been a little more different thing for him. You know what I'm saying? Adding on the extra weight again, coming in and then fighting an elite fighter like Danny Jacobs. That could have been some problems for him. I'm not making an excuse for him, but moving up in weight like that, adding on with seven, six more pounds, you know what I'm saying, for one fight, you know, it probably gave him a little bit of problems. You know, but to me, he still did well. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be trouble in hell for anybody. He's a good um, boxer. You know, he got a good one-two, good jab. The right hand is quick. Uh, 
I can't say it's powerful or but it stings you. You know, I can see in Dan Jacob's face, you know, that's why Danny literally switched to Southpaw. A lot of people were like, uh, they didn't really know why or why is he doing that. He was switching to Southpaw to see that right hand coming because he got tired of him with it. I mean, getting hit with it. And once he seen how he would throw it, then Dan Jacobs went back into, you know, uh, orthodox. But Dan, you put up a good fight. You know, Daniel fought in spurts and in spots. You know what I'm saying? He did enough to win the rounds that he won. But I will say this. Uh, this was not a fight for him to go and get in the ring and call out Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo. And y'all know I don't too much like the Charlo brothers, but I will give Jamal Charlo his respect. He's a powerful puncher. He's a good boxer. And this wasn't a fight for Daniel Jacobs to uh, call him out. And Daniel Jacobs made a big mistake by... Uh, giving that dog some sunlight, I mean some moonlight. You know, I said in my last, one of my last videos that uh, when, a di when a dog howls at the moon, if the moon shines down on that dog, acknowledge that dog, then that dog becomes on the same level as that moon. You know what I'm saying? He shouldn't have did that because I'm now people are looking for Jamal Charlo. People know his name now. And I don't know why he would do that when Jamal Charlo doesn't have a belt. You know what I'm saying? But he said in the ring that he was going after belts if he couldn't get a title fight with Golovkin or Canelo or Billy Joe. And then, you know what I'm saying, he will go after the contenders and the prospects that's coming up. But I still feel like he shouldn't have. He should have put no light on Jamal Charlo at all. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that or disrespecting Jamal Charlo, but I'm just saying that he put him in the spotlight by mentioning his name that night, last night. He shouldn't have did that. And that wasn't the fight for him to come out and call out Jamel, Jamal Chalo. Because if he would have went out there and straight ran through Seleko, you know what I'm saying, wouldn't have been in a competitive fight at all, and then knocked him down, knocked him out, then, hey, that's when you're going to say, Jamal Chalo, come on, boy, bring it on. But you don't go 12 rounds with a guy, even though he was 26-0, and 0, his first time stepping up to an elite fighter of your level, and he took you to 12 rounds. It looked like he had you a little tired from the eighth and up. I mean, now I'm saying that, yeah, the eighth and up. And then you get out of there. And true enough, you got your win. Shout out to Dan Jacobs. But to me, that was the wrong fight to go out there and call out um, Jamal Charlo. Now, if he would have went out there and did to him what he did to Peter Quillen, then yeah, I could see him like, hey, Jamal Charlo, boy, come on. Now you'd be like, oh, people like, oh, yeah, you see what I'm saying? But that was a, a decent performance. You know, we seen we have seen Danny Jacobs in better performances, but uh, you know he coming off of being three undefeated fighters, so we gotta give him his credit for that. You know, uh, most fighters ain't running up the line fighting undefeated fighters. He done fought three on back to back, so you gotta give him his credit for that. But I'm just saying that this fight was not the statement to call out Jamal Charlo. And one thing I seen in that fight is that Seleko has a, a quick right hand, a quick one two. And the Charlo brothers, that's all they throw. One twos, one twos, jab, one two. They go to the body two now, but majority of their punches come from that one two, that one two. And Jamal Charlo is part is powerful. So, you know, I made a video about, you know, them I mean, um, Jamal Charlo and Danny Jacobs getting into it in the hallway at the, after they had a fight or whatever at the arena. But now that I see these going on, see this going on in the ring with Daniel Jacobs, and I'm looking at the power and the fighting style of Jamal Charlo. This could be, this could literally be a 50-50 fight. You know, this, this could be a good fight. Because if Daniel Jacobs go out there with that type of fighting against Jamal Charlo, I can't say that Daniel Jacobs will beat um, Jamal Charlo. Uh, one thing you have to look at, too, is now Daniel Jacobs is making good money. He, he on that millionaire level. He comfortable. Jamal Charlo is hungry. You see what I'm saying? He he want he want his respect. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't coming out there to just win against uh Daniel Jacobs. He literally coming out there to destroy, dethrone Daniel Jacobs. So this will be a totally different fight than what people are expecting. But you know, I always look in the faces of fighters. You know what I'm saying? Even if they talking and confrontating, Jamal Charlo looked intimidated of uh. Daniel Jacobs. So by that form of looking in at him as like he intimidated him, 
that could play a major factor in the ring. And for people who don't understand when I say this comment, they probably be like, that ain't got nothing to do with it. I learned this one watching Evander Holyfield versus Mike Tyson, and this is what Evander Holyfield said once when they was talking about it. He said he went into the ring with butterflies, just like all fighters do. He said, but he looked across the ring and he seen Mike Tyson's face. And Mike Tyson, they showed Mike Tyson's face. Mike Tyson looked like he didn't want to be there or like he didn't, he didn't want that fight no more. You see what I'm saying? He said, I knew I had him right then and there. So you look at the fighters' faces and see what's really going on. And you could tell who's going to do what and who ain't going to do what. And from what I saw in Jamal Charlo's face, now, I, even though I just said it's going to be a good fight, 50 50, I seen intimidation. I seen no smoke won with Daniel Jacobs for real. Daniel Jacobs literally made this man forget what he had said in his own tape. Jamal Charlo went to stuttering. I, I ain't say that. I ain't say that. And then Daniel Jacobs just had to get loud. He said, Road Runner. Road runner, y'all, y'all know, go back and watch it. So, you know, that may play a big factor in that fight. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the big keys I'm going to give Daniel Jacobs on that fight, the tim intimidation. But for the young gunner and the power, I got to go with Jamal Charlo. And y'all know I'm not a I'm not Charlo brother fan. So I'm not just being biased. I'm not uh, just riding Jamal Charlo's coattail. I'm just getting y'all the straight up analysis on that fight, man. He shouldn't have called him out after a fight like that. Because right now, whoever is uh, Jamal Charlo's manager, they calling uh, Jacob's manager. They trying to get this fight. After that, that was that was a uh, mediocre, lackluster performance, y'all. Y'all know that. You know what I'm saying? If you're a Daniel Jacob fan, hey, he won. He's a great champion. You know, he's the miracle man. You know what I'm saying? I got nothing bad to say about him. But that was the wrong time for him to call out Jamal Charlo. Now, if you went out there and knocked this dude on the, out the ring, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> knocked him in the outer space. Hey, he could have stood up on the ropes, beat up on his chest like Tank, and said, who next? You know what I'm saying? Jamal, come on. But no. You know, you, you Jamal Charlo doesn't even have a belt. You know what I'm saying? Jamal Charlo came at you because of your name. And now you have put his name right beside yours. That was a blatant mistake. That you did exactly what he wanted you to do. After the... Uh, Argument at the arena, wherever y'all had the argument at, you should have left him alone till he got a belt. You should have said what you said. That's it. When you get a belt, come holler at me. Other than that, I wouldn't have gave him no light at all. That was a big mistake by Daniel Jacobs. But other than that, he came out, he did his thing. He uh, had a, a, the heart of a Brooklyn fighter, showed out for his hometown, and he won. You know, he dropped the guy. Uh, one thing Danny um did adapt in the ring. He did he did literally and people don't watch their eyes in the ring. Their eyes are deceptive in the ring. You know, they uh look down and can throw a punch in your face. Or look at your body and throw a punch in your face. Or look at your uh face and throw a punch to your body. People don't never say that when they uh making videos about boxing, but the eyes in the ring are very important. I see Floyd do that a lot. When he do that lean down punch, you look at your body and come up and hit you in your face. You know what I'm saying, with that lean counter right hand. Yeah. So, like I said, I've been watching it for a long time, man. I'm gonna get, I need to get this laptop and stuff like that. Oh, also, uh, I got me another PlayStation 3. My other one was getting hot. You know what I'm saying? In the middle of the fight, so it'll just turn off. Uh, if you play Fight Night Champion, and this, if, you, if you ain't got Fight Night Champion, you ain't no real uh, boxer fan. <laughs> but uh, Fight Night Champion, my name is Tall Bizzle. That's T A L L. B I Z dash Z L E 83. You heard me? That's T A L L B I Z dash Z L E 83. So if you want to uh, get your ass whooped, you know what I'm saying? Get your, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hit me up on now. You know what I'm saying? Send me a friend request. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna get on it in a few minutes. Uh, this is my off day. I'm really kind of tired. I might just lay down, play me one game or two. But y'all uh, get on there and um, hit me up. You know, but like I said, shout out to Dan Jacobs and Slicko for coming in now, being a good contender. And like I said, we're going to see more of him. And I guarantee you he's going to upset somebody with a name out there. But it's easy work, Boston. Thank you for your time. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe. I'm out.